Hi, welcome to our last day of Salilo Falls reading and writing activities. My name is Mrs. Brown and I teach middle school history and I'm so happy that you've been going on this journey with me. Last time we finished the story, I wish I had seen the falls and we learned about what happened to the falls. We also learned about why the falls were so important. The falls were an age old, millennia old um, fishing and trading uh, site for thousands and thousands of native people as far as away as far away as the Great Lakes area up into Alaska down into California and this place was the place to be and in 1957 is when the Dells Dam was built and the Dells Dam um, caused the water to rise and the water rose over the falls and so there were no more falls we found out in the at the end of the story and our narrator Chucky was very sad and so he um, and his grandma uh, they prayed for forgiveness for everything that had happened and and, um, and that seemed a little hopeful to me and so um, Chucky had been looking at grandma's photos, and so I thought that we would look at some of grandma's photos today. So this one is um, a photo of Celilo Falls. It may not come through on the video real well, but you can see all of the rapids and so forth. And then you can see right here, you can see the, um, the fissures, the silhouettes in the background. And what I ask you to do today is to take a look at grandma's photos and think about the ones that you would like to write descriptions of. Those little short descriptions are called captions and we need to look at the details to be able to draw effect or to be able to write effective um, captions. And so in your packet, if you have it, uh, and if not, that's okay, just use a piece of paper. You can jot down some notes, but I have reproduced grandma's photos in the packet so that you could write down your caption there. And the reason why I'm asking you to do this is so that you can pay attention to the detail and so that that skill you will practice and then you can you can transfer that practice into the writing of your story that we've been working on so this is uh Celilo falls maybe i would say uh native fishers in the in the distance or silhouetted against the rapids of Celilo falls and maybe i would say the roaring rapids and so I'd be using that language that I practiced um, during my envisioning skills practice uh, of this lesson. Here's another one that uh, you can see you can see the fissures a little bit better on the scaffold so maybe you could add to your caption a little more a little more detail of Fisher using his dip net to fish giant salmon from Celilo Falls along the Columbia River. This one you can see the gorge in the background. And so this one would be something that you might wanna draw a caption of. And then grandma would also write captions as well. This one, I love this picture. And grand, um, you can't see it real well in the video, but back here is what's called a train trestle. It's a train bridge. And so it goes across the Columbia River. It's really, really high. And grandma wrote, she said, as the railroad company built the bridge, tribal fishers wondered why it was so high from the water, not knowing the Dalles Dam would eventually flood over the falls. And so that picture to me is, is especially important. Here's another one here showing a fisher pulling out a giant salmon out of the, the the Columbia River at Celilo Falls. So you could maybe have a caption like that. Start thinking about pictures. Maybe your family or you have pictures of your place that you've been writing about. Maybe you should go dig those up either on your electronic device or um, in a box somewhere and you would be able to, to use those details to write some captions. And then those might be um, some of the uh, some of the images that you might use in your story. So that one there talking about the scaffold and um, grandma says that, that um, the salmon were so abundant that the fishers would take turns and it would just be a few minutes before a fisher would catch a fish and then the next one would come and then the next one and so on. This one here 
Again, we see the fissures and then we see the gorge in the background. And this one I really like a lot. It's a colorized photo, but you can really, really see the fissures. It really kind of brings them to life and you can definitely see the falls here and you can see the dip nets in the, in the rapids there. This one here I love as well because you can see the giant salmon. Grandma in her caption says that salmon back then reached up to 90 pounds and there, was, there were enough for um, all tribal families. So the fish were very abundant. And then we move on to this one. This one I like a lot too because you can really see a lot of detail. You can see the fish here. You can see the rope around the fisher's waist to protect to protect him from um, from drowning should he fall into the to the to the rapids. So so you have all of these pictures, and I also included Grandma's captions. And then um, I want you to think about then what do the falls look like now? What do you think they they would look like now? Well, they've been flooded over but maybe are there any rapids there? What might it look like? And so here it is. It's now Celilo Lake. Underneath the surface here, beneath the surface, is Celilo Falls, but, it does, but you don't have um, the water rushing over it anymore. In fact, this is now called Celilo Lake. And you can see that some fish are still fish, so there might still be some fish but there are a whole bunch of issues um, with the abundance of fish and, and the, the lack of salmon uh, because of dams and overfishing and other issues that, that you can, that you can uh, research on your own if you would like. But you can see the dowels down here. You can see the concrete gates that Grandma described. And so when those close, then the water has to rise. And so that is Celilo Falls. And so... When I was thinking about this lesson, and I was thinking about including my special place, my childhood place where I have so many memories of Cemetery Road, um, I started thinking about how places change. But you're not gonna know that unless you see Cemetery Road. And so I dug into my mom's old photo albums and I'm being very brave and showing you some pictures of me and my family. And so this one right here, is my brother in the front yard. Remember how I said that there were weeping willow trees there that provided so much shade, and then there are some fruit trees in the background? I wonder what type of caption I would write. Maybe um, bicyclist wants to be, wants to be Evil Knievel. He was a big motorcycle stunt daredevil back, back in the day. So I might bring in some detail like that. This is a picture of my friends and family uh, in the front yard, but actually over close to the side a little bit more where you can see the fruit trees. This is actually in the backyard and just through the trees, you can see my house, my cinder brick house. There's my dad, there I am. I, I turned three that day. And so there are friends and family around. And then you remember how I talked about my dad's truck. Well, my dad's truck is right there, and there I am with a really bad haircut, and there my brother is with a cowboy hat. And so you can see my dad's truck and the carport and the garage just beyond the truck, and then my house over here on the left-hand side, and so many amazing memories happen there. And um, I hold those memories so dear, and they're so vivid in my, in my head. And I hope that what you see here is maybe what I helped you envision um, in some of the earlier lessons. And so would you like to take a look at what it looks like today? I went back there and this is my house. So I don't know when it was torn down. I don't know uh, when the trees were pulled out, but all I have now are my memories and those little bits of pictures. And so as I continue um, engaging you in this activity, in this lesson, I want you to think about your special place that you've been writing about. Maybe you could include in your story what it would be like in 50 years. Maybe you have a narrator who's a grandparent or a grandchild and you use that model for your, um, to tell about your special place. But think about what it would look like. Would it be improved? Would it be kind of old? and kind of run down, would it be gone? Would you hope it would be better? Maybe your story is a story of what you hope it will be in 50 years. 
Anyway, you get to choose because you are the author. And I've got to tell you, I am really sorry to say that we're done. But I don't want you to be done with your story. I'm not done with my story. I think I'm going to try to finish it. And I would love for you to finish yours. And, and I would love to, I would love to read them. So maybe your adults at home can get your, can get your stories to your teacher or to your school and then they could get them to me. They would know how to do that and I would read every single one. So I would really, really enjoy that. If you want to be brave and do that, I would be honored. Now there are also gonna be some of you who really just wanna learn more about Celilo Falls and the, and the history of it. And so after the pictures and after the story template in your packet, uh, there is an article that I, that I put in and it's an article about all of the history of Celilo Falls, the before, the during, and the after. And then there are some additional pictures with, uh, with captions on the, uh, of the village and the surrounding areas. And, um, and that you could share with your family. You could read it and um, maybe you choose to write a story about Celilo Falls. And I would love to see that one too. I would love to read that one too. If you're brave and, and you want me, you want to share it with me. Lastly, uh, there is a page of websites and books. If you or your family are really interested in learning more, there are so many books and so many videos uh, about Celilo Falls because it, it is such, such uh, an important place. It continues to be an important place, even though it's under the lake. Celebrations and first food ceremonies happen there every year and they have since time immemorial, since the beginning of time. Anyway, I wanna thank you so much for going on this journey with me. Uh, it's been so much fun reliving my memories, sharing them with you, envisioning and predicting and sharing stories and sharing pictures. Um, I hope that you had fun because I really did. I really enjoyed this lesson and I want you to have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and continue to write, 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 and then make sure to get outside. Get outside and play. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.